everybody. We are here at E3 2019, this SOM, Spawn on Me, and Wardcast collab couch is in full effect. We have a very special guest. I am Khalif Adams, and this is... I'm Dylan Vento. But we have someone who you may know hanging out with us here at E3. Oh, God, You're the one it? and only, the my man, my mellow, the smooth kind of fellow. It is Tim Schaefer. Woo! How are you doing? Oh, I'm so glad it was me. I thought you were going to bring in someone cooler, S like someone better, and say... We, uh, there's no couch. You said couch. I said couch. Was a couch. There was a couch, so yeah. we're trying to keep it there's thematically like a couch chair. You should have seen oh, it. Did I blow the? Are you green screening in a couch? Sorry, <laughs> we're on a couch here. Yeah. I'm honored to be here. It's a as your guest. <laughs> Thank you, both of you, for having me of on your course. couch. Thank yeah. you so much for coming through. How's it's been E3 doing? A, it's been a very interesting and uh, fun conference for you, I am sure. E3 yeah. has been really, really different this, this year. I'm this sure. is the earliest I've ever been to E3 because oh, really? we were in the uh, Xbox. Uh, press event. Yep. I don't know if you saw that, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of preparation for those events. They don't <laughs> just they don't just like it's not just kids putting on a show in the barn. They they practice that stuff. So sure. we were starting <laughs> early, rosining up the bow, getting ready for the show, and uh, it worked. And I was just so glad I didn't trip and fall off the stage and die. I always wonder, and I'm always scared for people who have to do that like initial get on the stage, and they're like, uh, "Here's the thing that's going to get announced. Like now, it's your time to get on the stage. Don't fall." I don't know if you announced it. We uh, we got a choir. That's one thing I we know. announced. It was pretty exciting. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Congrats. it was fun. Yeah, um, by Microsoft. That's why we announced it at uh, their okay. thing. Not oh yeah, it yeah. makes sense. But uh, the real news is I had to follow Keanu Reeves, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a lot of pressure because yeah. he he pretty much nailed it with the crowd. They pretty they they loved him, and then I had to come out. So I mean I mean that's a big that's a big change for you guys, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like being independent for so long. And yeah. Now. I mean, and Double Fine. Not. Double Fine's been around for 19 years this wow. year, yeah. uh, and we've been independent. And we never really wanted to be acquired, but you know, the, Matt Booty. Have you met Mr. Booty? Yeah. The sweet talking man. He just came <laughs> in. He's like, yeah. "We're gonna let you be who you are. We love you for who you are." Sweet, sweet Booty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and can't uh, turn it away. I can't add to that. And. Um, uh, and that sounded good to us. Plus, not having to worry about going out and hustling and, and sure. constantly thinking about where the next uh, deal is coming from. I just think about weird things to do with bacon and other ideas that we have for yeah. Psychonauts and other games. So it's it's been great. The team's really happy, and and I'm I, I, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. What's exciting. what's your current slate? Psychonauts two. It's we're doing Rad. Psychonauts two, which we're showing over there in South Hall, and yep. then Rad is Rad's our uh, Lee Petty, the creator of yes. Headlander. Yeah. Uh, is a roguelike post-apocalyptic uh, double apocalypse. Um, uh, that's showing in the Namco booth. They're still publishing oh, nice. that. So okay. yeah. So all our stuff under underway is still going forward. We're still publishing Knights and Bikes and right. and and um, Samurai Gun Two. And we're still bringing those to the platforms we were bringing them yeah. to before. Yeah. before. And you guys were working on Kids, but that's already out, right? Kids is out. Yeah. Kids is yeah, really yeah. good too. Snuck that one really in. Snuck that in before. I, kids is super fun. Kids, yeah. yeah. I like kids it. is an experience and it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's, makes, you should think. I went to the PAX West. But not too much. Sorry. I went no. to the PAX West Double Fine booth, and no one was on either Kids or Samurai Gun, and I kind of lost my mind like a little bit. I was like, why is like play? It both comes and goes. It comes and goes. You know, lunch times things change, but usually like all the machines are pretty full, and um, that's always that's always fun. Yeah. To to you know that show you get sure. to meet a lot of fans, and then now this is public, so we do still meet a lot of people. Right. I was just the Double yeah. Fine, the second house booth, meeting people. We have standees of Raz and stuff. Like, we never had that for the first game. That's cool. First game, they had us in, like, a little veal yeah. slaughtering pen, and they bring in, like, one guy. And then <laughs> but do you have Gooigi? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what did you if I, call, if I you missing call something? Me? Not is that I haven't Gooigi? been my doctor in a while, but <laughs> it's that is a, I assume so, you could just take something for so that. So Luigi's Mansion 3 has yeah. a goo version of Luigi. Oh, oh, Gooigi. Yeah. I did watch that. That's right. Yeah. And I'm excited about that, but I don't have it yet. Oh. Well, you can steal it from the <laughs> I Nintendo hope to one. get it. Oh. Yeah. So I had a, I had a conversation wait, with wait, Aaron Green. Oh. Can we back up a second? You can get an actual physical gooey. No, I'm saying they have one at the booth. Like, if you really uh, want to oh. work, want I want a little squishy yeah. Gooigi that oh. I can like poke. Well, I want oh, a stage stress, like a stress Luigi. Yeah, yeah, yeah a stress I, I, Luigi. I want to stage a caper and steal Gooigi. Is it? You're not talking about a person in a mascot suit, no, are you? Because that would no, not be like illegal. Well, yes. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I was talking to Aaron Greenberg earlier this week, uh, talking about the conference, talking about the briefing and everything, and I was like, that was a pretty big acquisition of Double Fine. How is it now? Uh, to work with him in, in, in kind of intimate spaces now. You like don't have to do the like, hey, I see you all over there, I see you over here. We're all like in the same room now kind yeah. of talking about how that stuff works. How is it kind of working with, 
Wait, what did he say? No, he was super excited. He was super happy. <laughs> you yeah, yeah, you talked about it. You didn't mention what oh, he, yeah, yeah. He's he, like, yeah, he was. Tim he, is stinks. It was I had no idea he smells until I got into intimate situations with him, like you said. Uh, no, yeah. he was. He, it was all glowing terms when he, when he oh, talked about nice. you. Yeah, they're all really. I mean, we know Microsoft. We've known them for, since we've been around. Our first contract, uh, the first, the beginning of Double Fine, the first dollar that came in was a signed publishing contract for Second Last One yeah. with Microsoft. And then uh, we'll skip ahead. And then um, <laughs> we did Iron Brigade with them. Yeah. And then we did, um, we worked with them on a bunch of Connect stuff, like Connect Party and yep. uh, Double Fine Happy Action Theater. And. Once upon a monster. So, yeah. Yeah. all through that, we've been working with them. I know Phil Spencer and um, a lot of people up there for many, many, many years. Yeah. And Mr. Booty, fine, fine, fine people. Um, and and they've been great, you know. Yeah. And so it, it really it, it fit. I li- I like what they're doing. I think they have some really smart plans for the future. And a lot of things are changing, and no one knows what's going to happen with all this subscription yeah. stuff and different distribution models. And it feels like a nice place to be. Uh, while we go through transitions, you know? that's actually really interesting. I, I wanted to get someone else's perspective about the the, you know, who's working in those spaces. How are you feeling about Project uh, X Cloud and all that stuff, and how all those things are kind of coming together, and you know how that affects what you guys are doing at Double Fine? Anyway? Yeah, I mean, and I mean, in the end, we're really focused on content and, and narrative and all these all these issues that don't really change when technology changes. Sure. But as a you know business person, yeah, your lives are dependent on what's right. going to happen with these things, and I've never been like that kind of. I've never been like, I know what's going to happen in five years. I've never been a pundit. No one would bring me on here to be like, what's going to happen in games hardware in five years? Like, um, I don't know. I still have a TiVo, so I don't know what's going. I do. I still love my TiVo. Right. But um, I'm, not, I'm not good at predicting, so it, it's really hard to um, have your whole company dependent on that. And so you know, being part of Microsoft gives us a chance to be, uh, I mean, I think it's going to be great for them. And I think it makes sense why they would have us make content and all the other Studios like Obsidian and Exile and Ninja Theory and Compulsion yeah. and all these uh, great studios that are doing games. It makes it's a great. I think it's a smart plan. It's going to lead to just a, a kind of a plethora, a, an abundance of content that's going to make Game sure. Pass and things like that really appealing to people. Yeah. yeah. And then if someone comes to you, you know, we make games that are somewhat uh, unusual. Hopefully, yeah. you know, we try yeah. to, we try to, and but that to some people that takes a that takes a big leap to get them to take a risk on a like a sixty dollar game or something like that. That's totally. like Psychonauts. Um, but if we're in there and they, maybe they came for another game that was made them more comfortable and then they saw our game they're like, well, it's here. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I'm going to try that out. And then they'll fall in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's exciting. Right. Yeah. You guys do a lot of uh, awesome work outside of just making your games. I mean, you have Day of the Devs. Mm-hmm. You have uh, the, um, the, the, like, Double Fine Presents, like mm-hmm. you said. Mm-hmm. Like, what is, do you, like, know what your future plans are with, with that kind of stuff now? Yeah, I mean, some of it is going to change, obviously. You know, our platform focus is changing. Um, but we... We still want to do things like Day of the Devs. I think it's a great show, and you know Xbox always comes down. And if you look at the Xbox, the ID at Xbox lineup, you know I like, spotted. Oh, that's the yeah. one from Day of the Devs. There's yeah. a lot of you know, because um, Chris Tra- Chris Charlie does an amazing job of getting you know great games. And so we kind of our our goals really align in that, like yeah. finding the best indie games and promoting them by whatever means. And so we have a different platform now that we can use to help it, uh, promote great indie games, and we can try and find another way to do that. But uh, all our existing publishing things we're going to keep uh, publishing, sure. uh, right. Knights and Bikes and, and Samurai Gun 2, but you know, going forward, something will probably evolve in that space. Because yeah. having a publishing group inside of another publishing group is uh, tricky, probably, problematic, yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> weird? Yeah, it's like a turducken. Yeah, it's like publishing. a Gluigi. It's, a, <laughs> it's, like <laughs> it's weird, but you, you want to poke it. Yeah. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah. So if you weren't here doing all this madness, getting acquired here and, uh, and getting to talk about it at an E3 stage. Mm-hmm. What would you do at a conference like this usually if it's like Oh, ask out? for money. That's <laughs> right. People have so many fond reflections of, of E3. They're like, what's your greatest E3 money? I'm like, E3 memory. I'm like, oh my God, E3 means something totally else to me. Yeah. For years, it's been where I come to beg for money. Either, oh my God, I've got a game demo and I got to pitch it to every single publisher in the world. Yeah. And if I don't get it signed, I'm just going to have to go fire a bunch of people. You know, it's like that yeah. kind of pressure, right? Or else the game's going to come out and I have to go to every single news outlet, yeah. uh, sit on every weirdo couch, you know, with uh, full of Luigi's, you know, you know. but no, you know, I have to go do a ton of interviews and stuff like that and promote this thing. Um, and so E3 is it's about some, like, you know, coming down here to like hustle and, and, and uh, sell my wares all the time. Yeah, sure. And, uh, so now it's a little more relaxing. I'm not, you know, I feel like the money thing is handled. Yeah. And now it's just about letting people know about Psychonauts and Rad and getting people to play them and hanging out with cool people on the couch. 
Yeah, the couch. couch. They can't <laughs> see. The camera cuts I mean, off right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hope because yeah, yeah. I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> <laughs> pants is E3. <laughs> totally, totally. Hashtag. I do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I talked for so long, you guys forgot. What, no, yeah, what where am I? No, You're no. like, who? I Sorry, I doze off. No, yeah, no, no. Just what, Tim Schafer really likes to talk. No. No, I'm just fine. <laughs> so, I mean, does this, like, does this... Uh, Acquisition also like I don't know embolden you, and I'm also curious about, curious about this about the other acquisitions that, that Microsoft has made, mm-hmm. like you know hiring up or like trying to do more projects or more in this style of games because like you know I remember a long time like I, I keep up with like the documentary stuff that you guys do and like yep. Amnesia Fortnite. Um, oh, thanks for watching. Of Those are great. Very YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> super fun. <laughs> um, and two player productions. I'm I'm curious. So, like, you've, you've spoken before about how, like, Amnesia Fortnite is, like, almost a test bed for, like, new projects. So, like, mm-hmm. Stacked and, like, uh, stacking. other... Stacking. Uh, stacking, I'm sorry. I'll, everyone calls it stack. We oh. should have called it, called it stack. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's, like, a... Um, what's her name? Baywatch person's... Isn't that... Didn't she have a show called Stacked? Stacked? She worked at a bookstore. Oh, okay. Pamela Anderson worked at a bookstore. It's called Stacked. Maybe. Sure. Look it up. Yeah. It's already in the chat. They're yeah. like, he's <laughs> that right. Was like, he's that right. Was like, he's right. I have everything. Like episode. the universe of Baywatch Nights. Yeah. Before... I think it was after Barbed Wire... <laughs> she was on show called Stacked. Anyway, Stacking, yes. Came from Amnesia yes. Fortnite. Back yes. at you. Put that in the comments below. Tell us what, what the name of that was. Is that, does that make you want to do more of that stuff or go back to like those previous Amnesia Fortnite projects to be like, okay, we have we have more resources now. Maybe like that, try to do more of them at the same time. Or very I insightful of you. That is exactly what I'd like to do. I mean, <laughs> um, because I, I had old ideas that I was, uh, what we don't have time to do is take an idea that you're like, uh, it's so weird that you're like, we need to really test this. We need to yeah. prototype this. We need to like develop this a little bit. Um, but when you're when you don't know exactly where your next deal is coming from, you like don't have you can't fund that kind of thing. You just gotta sign something you know you can sign. Yeah. Let's go. And so uh, with this new deal, we'll still be working on Psychonauts and, and Rad. But when the Rad team finishes, some of them can work on uh, weird little prototypes that to to figure out whether we want to make these bring these ideas all the way. Um, and you know, Lee has ideas and sure. I have ideas, and we could just, it sounds so great to just take them, incubate them, and develop them to the point that we want to like say, hey, Mr. Booty. Check out this cutie, <laughs> right? <laughs> slogans, constant slogans. Oh, uh, now I want that like on a little little placard <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, I so regretted re- it the second I saw it, but I also said it. But I also am happy. Well, you with said it. it first, and so now it's TM'd and it's all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now it's yours. You make bumper stickers. Booty. I'm always Check curious about, um, you know, when usually you have uh, an acquisition happen, and then the, the the person who runs the company comes out and kind of shares that information out. What does that look like when it filters back down throughout the rest of the company? I've always wondered if it was we like... tell them first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. If you don't tell them first, that's mean. I mean, I guess if you had thousands and thousands of people, it's hard to get them in a room. But, you know, we told them the last possible minute because it was very secretive. I yeah. mean, they, you know, they're smart. They figured these yeah, things out. Sure. And um, they uh, they were pretty happy about it because, yeah. you know, the... Even, we've been around for 19 years, so obviously stable enough to be alive. Sure. But I, I always say it's like kind of having being an indie studio, especially big indie studios, like being in a glass bottom jet, like yeah. it's stressful. Yeah. You're you're flying, you're still you're okay, but man, you see uh-huh. you see down there, and like it goes up and down every turbulence, like oh. Uh. So um, it's nerve wracking, and we've gotten really close a couple times to having bad things happen, you know, and we've always pulled through, but you know people remember that and they get like a little twitched sure. about it, you yeah. know. Yeah. And you know. Uh, it, it it just means more stability, you know, doing things we couldn't do before, making a few hires. Probably not. We, I don't think it makes any sense to just grow and turn into a different type of company. Sure, I sure. think staying the same size, but just a few hires. We've always, you know, we always could use this other, you know, person that we always have to, you know, make this one poor person work twice as hard. It'd be nice yeah. to, like, be, you know, round out the team and really finish like knots in style. Yeah. Yeah. So, what about document documentary stuff? They're still is around. That, is that you can't, just can't see them. They're around here. Uh, no, two player productions. Two player productions. Yes. They, you know, they came to us. Uh, they were with the idea of doing that documentary, and we just kind of absorbed them into the company because oh, okay. our, our broken age took so long to make. We just like you guys have to just come here and join yeah. us and film it. We live here now. They do. They do. They live in that room, and um, they they've been filming Psychonauts just like that. But we're releasing it closer to launch, I think. Instead of oh, like okay. with Broken Age, we released it as we went. Yeah. But now we're filming it. They're crafting these episodes so that closer to launch, it'll be just regular um so you know people can binge it you know, so. yeah are you getting to play anything these days <laughs> am i what are you getting to play anything these days am i gonna play anything are you getting to play anything these yeah, days yeah, yeah. you're a busy I mean, busy man 
universally yeah. loved. It's so uh, it's so easy as you get older and you have a kid, you just be like, oh my god, I'm just gonna go to sleep, or I'm gonna watch Chernobyl all like, until four in the morning because I can't, can't stop watching. And, and then, then I can't everyone go to sleep. Is depressed. And I'm super sad. That's a great show. But uh, I've been getting into. I get. I got really obsessed with um, Baba Is You. You play oh, Baba yeah. Is You. I love yeah. that game. It's so. Um, it goes between like, oh, I can change the rules of nature and logic in the universe to like, oh, I'm so stuck. Oh yeah, my god, I'm so stuck. Yeah. But it, it, you know, you put it aside for a while, kind of like adventure games. You come back to the next day, eh, and you're still stuck. But then you come back, you take a shower, you come back. Eventually, like your brain figures it out while you're, you know, eating dinner, and then you solve yeah. it. But it, it, that's a really clever uh, and pretty game. Yeah. But I look forward to playing a lot of the games I've seen here. Although mostly in that Xbox world of press conference, but sure. there's still a lot of the games we've been following from a Day of the Devs, like uh, Dead Static Drive. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to play that game. Yes. And that, but I had never seen that um, Spirit Fairs one, and now yeah, I'm dying to play cool. that. That looks super awesome too. That was super I'm cool. I'm curious about like the boat building part of that. Mm -hmm. Like, like they kind of brushed over it a little mm -hmm. bit in the in and the there's trailer. A cat in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you think of the 12 minutes trailer? Did you? It was really stressful, <laughs> but it's so. I mean. It's such an interesting idea, and it being so contained, and it, uh, I, I, I would like to play that a lot. Yeah. But it, like, the, it was a very emotional <laughs> and very stressful trailer. Yeah, it, was, sure. it was a lot of like really quick cuts of just like that was nice. Oh no, that's not bad. That's like bad. That's really yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They kind of filled it out in, in a quick space, but it well, was nice. We had nice that at Dev Devs, and yeah? long time ago, it's really come along. Yeah, yeah. Really. I heard it's been long, long in development, which is cool because you see stuff like Submerge. And come yeah. back up. So, I remember that game. Yeah, yeah, like that deer game. Like apparently that like, that was a day of the devs too. Yeah, but yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. the guy was like originally like 15 when he started working on that project. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. And then, I mean, it's only been like five years or so. Something. Like, why so can't it come out? I like, legally cannot <laughs> yes. publish it because I'm a minor. Yeah. Well, I think you can. Um, I don't know. It makes me think about um, transitioning a little bit. Um, makes me think about kids a bunch because I've been playing it. Uh, the game it kids. Like, the game kids. Not just children. in general. Just Ch not children. From playables. Play. <laughs> <laughs> Labels people. kids. Yes. What is the proper SEO for that game? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what is the best way to find to get to that game? Uh, playables. Playables. Double kids. finds. Playables kids. Double find presents kids. <laughs> <laughs> that might help. Okay. That might be it. Yeah, yeah. Or you can go to doublefind.com and look at our games page and find ah. it there. But actually, the um, the playables website has a really funny uh, bot that is pulling down Steam reviews of their game and just. Uh, having text to speech read them <laughs> without any sort of editing, you should definitely go to that website and listen to it because it's kind of like, What is this? Is this even a game? <laughs> like, <it's just> <laughs> That's <laughs> super funny. good. Yeah. Um, so I was playing kids the other day and um, I was kind of thinking about you and I was like, hmm. What is the That's thing nice. that would, I mean, because. Thank I, you for thinking about me. I was thinking about you. I, and, uh, <laughs> and I was wondering when you see a game like that, because. When I was playing it, I was like, it's a little bit, it's whimsical, it's a little bit creepy, it's a little bit of mm -hmm. a bunch of different things. When you see a game like that and it first Just comes like up. like me. <laughs> whimsical and, come, and creepy. <laughs> and it comes up into your into your periphery. Like, what's the thing that you're like, all right, we need to we need to put this on the roster? Like, what's oh, the yeah. thing that's like, and I need the, to The add main that curator sort of for Double Point Presents, I mean, the curator for all that, is Greg Rice, who you yep. met. Yep. And he's in their documentary also. Yep. But uh, he is the... Um, the one who reads the submissions page, you know, the uh, uh, submissions email, like Indies at Double Fine, uh, for both Day of the Devs and Double Fine Presents. And uh, I think he looks for games that are like Double Fine games in that they're obviously labors of love. Yeah. You know, someone really cares about it and someone's making an individual artistic statement. Um, and then he explores it a little bit and might have them come to Day of the Devs or get to know them another way. And we also look for like developers that are like great people that we want to work with. And that's yeah. a really important thing. Um, so it's a lot of those kind of elements. I think it's just, it's looking for something that's, a game that's doing something different that has a definite, you know, uh, like a, a, a voice, yeah. you know, like David O'Reilly's everything had a definite voice and a, and a new thing to say. And so those kind of things are always uh, really appealing, I think, to Greg and to me. And we talk about him and he, he plays them at lunchtime with people from Double Fine. Like, what do you think of this game? And we'll kind of feel people out about it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the people like, you know, the, the kids people are great, and Knights of Bikes, if you've ever met Rex Crow or Muyu, yeah, they're just the greatest yeah. people, and yeah. it's just like an excuse to hang out with them. Like, please, let us do this game, and it looks beautiful, <laughs> and they're, yeah. um, and and that's going to be great. And and the and the Samurai Gun crew, too, like, they're all just great people. So yeah. it's not just to hang out and have fun, but that's definitely part of it. You want to work with great people. Yeah, yeah hang out with good people. You want to go out there and have fun. Yeah. On the field. <laughs> <laughs> game dev. And Mu just had a kid, so I'm sure that Yeah, helps congratulations. With the stress. Congratulations. Mu. Um, so I don't know how it's during, like. During shipping mode. Exactly. <laughs> Have a baby. 
He shipped a baby. Yeah, he'll oh, focus you. He's like, I got to get this game done because I got to spend time with the baby. Yeah, 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 seriously. Yeah. So what's the rest of your E3 look like at this point? Uh, we're hanging out in the Double Fine uh, Second Ounce booth, which yeah. is in South Hall. We've been giving demos and showing people the game and yeah. uh, talking about talking about Second Ounce 2. Yeah? Yeah. Let the people at home know. Second Ounce 2 is You're really, really good. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, we... Um, we're, we have a we have a demo. It's the first. Uh, it's a piece of the first level of the game. Yeah. Uh, should I talk about second ones? Yeah, yeah totally. about second of course. Yeah. You, you, it, the first game is a, it, like the first game is an action adventure platformer about yep. Raz, this young psychic who can astrally project itself into people's minds, and then once you're in someone's mind, it's like um, uh, it's the world of their thoughts come to life and their mental state represented in a literal sense. So you actually re fight their demons and wrestle with their nightmares and, and see what's ticking inside of their head. And so yeah. um, in the first game, uh, Raz ran away from his circus family to join the Psychonauts at an elite training facility, which turns out to be a psychic summer camp. Uh, and he gets some merit badges and saves the world a little bit. And then it ends, everything's all happy, except right at the very end, his girlfriend's father, who's the head of the Psychonauts, gets kidnapped. And yeah. they jump in the jet and rush yeah. off, kind of back to the future ending. Um, and then we sit still and don't work on it for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and then we made Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin, which is a VR game that told the story of that rescue mission, where they go to the underwater lair of Dr. Lobato and they rescue Truman Zanotto, the head of the Psychonauts, and they get in the jet, and they fly off into Psychonauts 2, yeah. which is what we're showing here, which is the, uh, the first level, which is a kind of a scheme that Sasha Nine and Mia Vodello, the superstar uh, secret agents, uh, have implanted inside Dr. Lobato's head this idea that he works at a office a nine-to-five office job mm. and ah, they're gonna okay. convince him that he's uh, he's one uh, employee of the year and he's got to get this permission slip signed by his boss so he can go on a <laughs> tropical vacation because they want to find out who hired dr. Lobato to kidnap Truman Zanotto are you following me so far yes. So, yes. so yeah Truman Zanotto was kidnapped and like dr. Lobato is not smart enough to, even though he's a dentist who can do brain surgery not smart enough to do this by himself who hired him mm -hmm. so they're doing this kind of inception mission impossible sure. thing inside cool. his brain to figure it out and then so it's all office space and it looks really boring at first. Yeah. And then, because he's a dentist, he starts to take over the mind with teeth. And <laughs> then things get a little weird. <laughs> this is madness. So this I guess madness. you mentioned Inception. I guess Inception came out after the first Psychonauts. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, so we did it first. So we can do whatever yeah, we want. Exactly. 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 Um, was there Drung. any Wait, comparing the sound? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's Garar. Garar. You can use that for your Spawn on Me theme song. I will, I will. Spawn. It takes oh, a long time. Oh, that was it? I thought you were going to keep going. Uh, it takes a long time. <laughs> me. That is the highlight of every E3 from now and forever. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. Um, is there, so for Psychonauts, is there anything that. You, do, you know, you did in the first game that, like, you feel like you weren't able to do then, either because of technology limitations or anything, or, like, scale or scope that you, like, are now really gung-ho about doing. Yeah, we couldn't make iPhone wallpapers because iPhones didn't exist. Okay. So that's <laughs> the main thing we do. We also, smart, that's uh, a jerky response. It's a jerky response. Okay, uh, so, um, you know, it's a, it's a story-based game, so a lot of the, it's not really technology, it's not really sure. hindered by technology. It's, right. it's, it's about stories, but... Uh, we also didn't know what we were doing. We made the first game. We had to learn a lot of it on the job. I'd never made a console game or a right. platformer before. Right. Oh, wow. So Grim Fandango was the last thing I'd made right before that. So it was a big jump. Uh, but um, so I feel like we had a lot to learn still about combat, about materials, about camera and stuff like that. And the game, you know, overcame a lot of those learning curves with just charm and heart and stuff like that. But um, we're starting out, you know, the first game really going deep on making sure combat really flows. And the psychic powers that you have, uh, making them work not just on puzzles, but in combat. So yeah. you can use telekinesis to pull a weapon off one enemy, throw it at the other, side blast this flying guy, and burn this other guy, and then burn something and then throw it at somebody, and do all these you know fun things to like uh, mix up the combat a lot. Uh, and that's something we're focusing on uh, in the second game. Yeah. Cool. We're almost out of time, but I want to ask you, I know that you know this is the main project that you're working on, mm -hmm. Second Acts 2. Coming soon. Um, is there anything that you've already kind of done in the space that you want to revisit? Like uh, wanting to go back to something else, another platform, another kind of uh, um, uh, element that you want to go? You talked about VR for a little bit, talked about mobile for a little bit. Any of that stuff you want to want to dig back into and kind of? Are you thinking about something specific that you want me to say? I no, I, I, felt got, I felt like he's got something. Digging, right? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No. It like, is so it Happy Action Theater? Or you want to go back to? Yeah. Yeah. 
But you're talking about platforms or spaces, not about IP. Yes. You know, you know what I wish I could keep making forever is Connect games. Actually, really? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever yeah. played um, Happy Action Theater or Connect Party, which is no. still the greatest thing we ever made. It's nodding. See, it's um, <laughs> and still my daughter just had her like 11th birthday party, and I turned it on, and this room full of kids just jumped up and down and had a blast with it. It's a Connect game where we we just put your image on the screen and fill your living room with lava and drop yeah. ball pits down on top of you and like make pigeons land on your head. And it's like. Uh, a lot of stuff people see now in like Snapchat filters and fun stuff sure. like that. Yeah. It's like, it shows a whole room back at you and little kids just love it and everybody can play it. It's like a game with no tutorial. Right. It just, you know, it plays and you can leave it on and it runs and everyone figures it out. No, there's no barrier to entry. And I just seeing a room full of people having fun with that is like I could make games like that all day long. Yeah, it's super yeah. fun. But connect. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> it feels like that was such a good idea. But my living room was never big enough to do anything with it. Yes. Well, yeah. well now you're at Microsoft, so like Skunk Works Project. Yeah. Bring oh, it I'm trying. I'm like, it's built into every controller now, right? And <laughs> we'll see. We'll to see. To my phone. Like, let's Double Fine presents this HoloLens game that we're going to yeah. see soon. Come Maybe we'll just add a hardware division, just make it ourselves. Yeah. Hey, you heard it here first. <laughs> no, I'm just one. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first and last. And last. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you got? No. No. Yeah. Because yeah. I was figuring that was going to be it. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Ten. That's good. We didn't even sing. We didn't have to sing. Dude, thank you Spawn. so much for coming. <laughs> that makes me so On Me. Yes. Thank you, Tim. Good. Love you, brother. I'm Thanks so for happy having you came through. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, much nice for coming. See you guys. I like your little goldfish bowl. Yeah. This is the yeah. weirdest. This is the weirdest setup. But uh, thank you. Shout cool. out to ESA and E3 for hooking it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm right. glad. It's a really great spot. You got Indicate right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're fantastic too. We have people come by and they just look at us real weird and then they laugh at us and then it's they like a lot of cool games. No, oh, I'm sorry, we're no. done. We can't keep talking. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thanks, buddy.